Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, it's me again Chelsea and today I am filming the prettiest books I own. So I put up a Twitter poll last night I think and I put up prettiest books mid-year series check and I think the mid-year freakout tag? I don't know, all of which are ones that I want to film but I didn't know which one to film first and this one won. So this is what I'm going to be doing. I have written down a list of like my top 10 prettiest books and then I've got some honourable mentions as well. So I don't know how long this is going to be. I will not really be giving many descriptions about these books. Most of these I probably haven't read. Um, there might be odd descriptions but if you're interested in any of these I will link them down below so you can check out the Goodreads links and see what they're actually about. I will also endeavour to tell you where I got these editions from. Most of them are probably sold out. I think a lot of them are because they're from like Fairy Loot or Illumicrate but I'll do my best. So let's get into this stack of very pretty books. So the very first one, this is in no particular order by the way, but the very first one I've already shown in a video and that was my May book box battles. I will link it up here if you have not seen it yet. So you'll all know that it is Witches Steeped in Gold by Siannon Smart and this is the Fairy Loot edition. We have this stunning foiling all the way round. We have stenciled edges all the way around which is amazing. We not only have let me just get the dust jacket off. We not only have the foiling on the actual hardcover itself, but if Fairly couldn't do enough for us, we also have stunning character art. Like how beautiful, how beautiful. I have included the full description of this in that book box battles video, so please check it out if you're interested. Like I said, the link will be down below. I can't tell you a lot about this book because I have no idea. I have not read it. I do know it's about two rival witches, I think, who have to kind of band together to achieve some sort of task or other, but this is definitely one of the most stunning books I own, and I'm sure a lot of you will agree. The next book I want to show you is a paperback. I think it's the only paperback on this actual list, and that was the fairly exclusive of The Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna. Stunning edges. It's very reflective. <laughs> it's the same cover I think as what the normal paperback is but it has got additional foiling and I believe the one that you could get from Waterstones, I don't know if it's still available, but I believe the one from Waterstones also had sprayed edges. This isn't signed or anything, um, I forgot to say The Witch is Steeped in Gold is also signed which is pretty cool. Most of these books are signed but yeah I just thought this was like a really pretty paperback. I think it's the prettiest paperback I own. But yeah, I really like this. Um, I am a sucker for spread edges, for foiling, anything like that, which you'll probably notice throughout this little display of pretty books. The next book is an Illumicrate exclusive and that is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. This one isn't signed, I have got two copies of this because my other one was actually bound upside down. So when you open it, it's actually that way up. <laughs> on the inside which is confusing. So my other one is signed, this one is not, but it is this stunning naked hardback. It's just got all of these beautiful designs in there. The end papers are stunning. I really like this. I've also just recently finished this. It does also have a ribbon bookmark. I recently finished this last night actually as I'm filming this. Um, so I do know what this one is about. This, in this book we are following Cal who is from Red London and he is an Antari which is a magician and he deals with blood magic and we also follow Lila Bard or Delilah Bard who dreams of escaping Grey London which is the London most like ours and she wants to be a captain and she wants to go on adventures and these two like just collide in the most extreme way possible and I really like the story. You learn about all four Londons so Grey London like I said which is like ours, Red London, which is where Kel is from, and that is um, the most magical London. Then you have White London, where magic isn't necessarily in abundance, but it is constantly under like a, a, a feud of some kind, and it is currently ruled by the Danes twins, who are bloodthirsty and extremely threatening. And Black London fell as it was consumed by magic, and it is now the 
basis of fairy tales essentially and I really enjoyed discovering the different Londons. I thought it was fantastic. I really really enjoyed this. I'm so glad I finally got to read it and I cannot wait for the next editions. So they're similar, they're all going to have like this kind of person on the front which I think a lot of her books do. I know that my edition of Adi LaRue has a similar sort of thing. I do also have dust jackets for these books but they are currently packed away as this is not our final stop. This is just a stop gap so I only have a few of my a few, a few this is a lot of books I only have part of my library here um so they will eventually get their dust jackets on when when we have stopped basically this also does have shimmery gray edges as well stunning edition absolutely amazing book I do recommend it I'm glad I can actually recommend one of the books in this in in this stack but yeah there you go the next book is one I'm sure a lot of you will know about especially if you're a book collector like myself this came in the October fairy loot I believe and once everyone did their unboxings everyone went mad for these books and that is Kingdom of the Wicked by Kerry Maniscalco the cover is stunning the edges are stunning so they've got stenciled edges on this edge and then just solid black on the top and the bottom and then I put this is the first one that I saw of this and they've, they've done it a couple of times now but this was the most in-depth foiling I think I'd seen on a cover and it's just absolutely stunning stunning this is also another edition with artwork on the dust jacket and i really like when artists do this i think it just gives you like an insight into part of the story i really like it um you'll notice that most of these editions that i have that are pretty are the ones that have foiling underneath i do have more then just this one um honorable mentions that i'll say just out loud and i won't show you that also have this kind of foiling from fairy loot include the I believe it's the golden Fl no yes the golden flame i believe that has it and also the prison healer both of those have like this kind of character foiling on the hardback and i think it's absolutely amazing i love this the next two books i'm going to show you are actually sets and i have the full set but i'm only going to show you the first book from the series and i think there's a couple more in this list as well that i will be doing the same thing but we're doing two in succession so the first one is the illumicrate version of the poppy wall by rf kwong these all have different colored um flamey wispy bits so this one has ready orange dragon republic has blue and the burning god has yellowy gold um they are all signed by the author as well and then my favorite thing actually about these books is that they all have this artwork underneath the dust cover like on the actual hardback and they're like little parts that have actually been included on the actual dust jacket just in a little bit more detail and like maybe a little bit more zoomed in i guess i don't really know and then there's all this stunning artwork as well oh i just love it i love it oh, i love pretty books they're all just so stunning aren't they i also really like that the innards match the wispy bit and all the different colors it's just really really well done and i love this artwork it's just so stunning right okay Moving on, the next one is the first in a fairy loot exclusive edition, and that is the City of Brass trilogy or the Deavabad trilogy. So this is the fairy loot edition. They all have different colours on the tops and the bottoms, and then they have this beautiful pattern. So this one has blue, Kingdom of Copper has green, and then Empire of Gold is like a burgundy kind of colour. And there is nothing underneath the dust jacket, unfortunately, but I do really love the end papers of this. So they've got like the special tip in kind of signed pages and they all look stunning i do think that is another thing that fairy loot do very very well is the like special end papers that they do and there's usually the signature there if they have time which is fantastic and once again artwork on the inside of the dust jacket oh i just love it love it so the next one is a waterstones exclusive and that is the starless sea by erin morgenstern i am yet to actually read this i've started it once or twice i think and i just haven't got very far in it which is really irritating but this is also stunning it's got these stenciled edges underneath it's also got the foiling underneath what i really liked about this book or like the the idea behind this book i guess is that they did three different colors they did the red which i've got they did a blue and they did i don't know what the other color is 
but they did three different colours and they're very very pretty and they just kind of make it feel even more exclusive and the fact that when I got this I didn't know which colour I was going to get I did buy this second hand of someone else but that's not the main thing I just think this cover is actually really stunning it's grown on me a lot I'm so glad to have this in my collection I also had the opportunity to get the Illumicrate um, special edition but I passed it up because I only wanted one copy of this book especially as I hadn't read it yet and I tried really hard to only own double editions of books that I really really loved or if it's by accident so um Addie LaRue is a perfect example I have two copies of that one is the Forbidden Planet edition because I wasn't too sure if that was a book we were going to get in the um a Lumicrate box but we did so I have an Lumicrate edition of that as well. I have two editions there as you can see of Crescent City but that is because the one on this one is the tour edition and this is the Warstones exclusive. I know that they're not going to do another tour edition so I've got the tour edition and then the Warstones exclusive are the ones I hope to carry on collecting so there's always that. I try and justify a lot. I just like collecting books. Now the last three in my top 10 prettiest books are all series so like I said I'll only hold up the first one. So the next one is Dora of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. This is the Illumicrate edition. I'm not so stunned by this bit but the bit that I do love is it without the dust jacket. So it's got this stunning quote on it which just says she had been innocent once a little girl playing with feathers on the floor of a devil's lair she wasn't innocent now and all of them have got a different quote on the actual hardcover and they've got the spine and they also have this stunning quote on the back which says once upon a time an angel and a devil fell in love it did not end well and they also all have artwork on the reverse of the dust jacket and they're just absolutely stunning. So all I really know about this is that we are following our main character Karu and she lives like a 50-50 life. She lives in the human world and she also is raised in this place called Elsewhere and she has to collect teeth for a demon. I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure there's a lot about teeth. I think he's a demon or something like that. But yeah, another one that's on my radar, I really need to read it, I'm just waving <laughs> the, the dust jacket around. But yeah, another stunning book that I own and one that I actually know something about, which is a win for me. <laughs> the next one I have to mention it is the Fairy Loot edition of The Cruel Prince. I have the whole set in this stunning edition, or these stunning editions, I don't know, they've all got stenciled edges for different things. So this one's got an acorn, one of them has got a seashell and I can't remember what Queen of Nothing has but it's got something they've all got foiling on them and then this stunning like green crisscrossy thing so part of them are like a bit shiny and then it's actually printed on the matte green hardback. Um, these all have book plates which are very stunning as well and they like correlate with the different things like acorns and shells and stuff. I have actually read this whole series. I quite enjoyed it. Um, I remember liking the final book but thinking back on it if I reread it now I probably wouldn't enjoy it as much as I did. It was kind of more uh, I think it was the first set of books that I actually read due to hype. Like mass hype because they came out around about the time when I was getting into booktube. I am a complete newbie mind. Um, although I started uploading videos March last year I don't really count my book my booktube birthday until September when I did my bookoplathon TBR because that is the start of me actually uploading consistently so that is my booktube birthday that is what I count. Also September is my birthday month so it just makes sense. But yeah, I've read this series. I know a lot of I know a lot of other people have. Obviously, we're following Jude and we have Carden and there's a really weird kind of toxic relationship. There's many actually toxic relationships in this book and they are Faye and it's all just up in the air and I actually want to do a reread of these. I think I'll still enjoy the first and the second books just as much, maybe a little bit more because I kind of get the gist of where they're going. But I think I'd like rate the Queen of Nothing lower, if that makes sense. Because, yeah, the ending just wasn't all that it was meant to be, I guess. But it is what it is. Another stunning edition. We have one more. So this is the ninth special edition. We have the tenth. And then I will get into my honourable mentions. So number ten has to be the Waterstones exclusive of 
Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. These books are stunning. I have um, Chain of Gold and Chain of Iron in the Waterstones editions and I also have them in the Illumicra editions which are equally as stunning. The difference is that the Illumicra editions have sprayed edges and the Waterstones ones don't but this one is stamp signed as is um, the other one I've got but I'm not too sure if my Illumicra editions are. I'd have to check, it's been a while. I haven't actually read these yet. I'm still working my way. I'm not working. I haven't actually read anything for ages. Um, I tried to pick up City of Bones a while ago and then got distracted by something else. So it is still my aim to read the whole of the Cassandra Clare back list this year. I don't know if it's going to happen, but we are still hopeful. We still have half the year left. It's fine. But yes i think these books are stunning i had to have them this is the most expensive book i've had to buy i bought this off someone else but this was the best price that i saw this going for this book goes up for like 80 pounds plus and i got it for 45 so i think that's pretty good and then yeah i'm just on it to, i just need the final book in the trilogy in this design and then i probably won't collect the special editions again because it's stressful so stressful they don't tell you how stressful being a book collector is trying to get all your editions to match but it is and a lot of the times it's bloodthirsty work <laughs> but that is my 10th book so those are the 10 stunning books my prettiest books i think i own and i have got three honorable mentions so let's just get into them quickly so the first one is a paperback and that is ink heart by cornelia funke or funk i don't really know which which one it is but I think these reprints that came out last year are absolutely stunning they've all got illustrations they've all got foiling the foiling is also on the spine as well and I just love them I do have an aim to reread this whole series and by reread I mean actually finish reading the first book and then experience the other two for the first time ever because I tried to read this when I was a lot younger and I say this every time but because I've seen the movie and the movie was one of my favourites as a kid I can't get past the fact that everything I see in this book I see in my head as the movie and you know the problem that you have when you're a bookworm and you're like oh well this didn't happen in the movie this didn't happen in the book or they missed out this because this is in the book and it's not in the movie I'm having that problem but the opposite way around because I've seen the movie first and this is why I don't do that <laughs> because it bugs me but yes Honourable mention number one. Honourable mention number two is The Devil and the Dark Water by Stuart Turnton. Look at these edges. They're just stunning. There is like no under the dust jacket art or stenciling, I don't think. Is there? No, there's not. It is just the edges. But the other thing I love are these end papers, which actually are really helpful when you're reading this book um, because it is based on that ship which is good. I really liked this. This surprised me. I think I gave this five stars last year. It is a murder mystery thriller whodunit kind of book. It is fantastic. I absolutely rate this to anyone. The main premise of this is that we are following Aunt Hayes who is the bodyguard to his best friend Samuel Pips and Samuel Pips is currently under arrest and being put on this boat but before they even set off the sails are unfurled and there is the mark of the devil on the sails and as much as both Samuel and Hayes try to convince the captain not to sail the captain says they have to go so they have to go and this journey is plagued with witchcraft and devilry throughout and the way this wraps up at the end is fantastic i didn't see some of it coming the main point i don't think i saw coming and oh, i loved it if you like thrillers and mysteries and i wouldn't say this is a horror i think it is kind of rated as a horror but i don't find it that scary there is a bit of gore there is a bit of like a, a jump scare I suppose but jump scares I think are harder to pull off in a book than in a movie but yeah I really enjoyed this fantastic book and then the final honorable mention goes to The King of Scars by Lee Bardugo because can we just like I think this is one of the first ever under the dust jacket foiling books I ever got this is just the standard edition this is not special in any other way so it's quite nice to see a standard edition book with something quite special underneath the dust jacket I also love this metallic cover I think it's stunning 
I haven't read this. I did read Shadow and Bone this year back in March, I believe, and I have also completed Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom previously. I love them all. So I need to finish the rest of the Grisha trilogy and then I need to get onto the King of Scars. I also now own Rule of Wolves, but I have not hauled that yet. So keep an eye out for a haul coming soon because it will definitely be in there. Okay, we have a bonus one. I did say final, but I had so many books, so many of the books that I own are absolutely stunning and I kind of forgot about this one but this is the Illuminate edition of the lives of saints yes it is the lives of, the lives of saints book so this is the Illuminate edition with the like stunning artwork all around and foiling and the spine and then it obviously has the standard under foil printing that the normal edition has from like Warpstones and the like so yeah i ha this is also stunning um and the artwork in it as well is just incredible i love it so yeah i didn't mean to include that but now it's included because i saw it i remembered and i had to talk about it <laughs> so now i can officially say that this video is done those are all of my prettiest books actually it's not they're not all of my prettiest books i have many other pretty books um they're just like kind of the top 10 that i could think of and i looked through my shelves and picked and some honorable mentions as well there are now four honorable mentions instead of three which is fantastic but i hope you enjoyed it if you did please give me a like really supports me and my channel leave me a comment down below what is the prettiest book that you own i want to know do you have any of these special editions do you collect special editions let me know and if you just want to leave an emoji leave the little sparkle emoji because these books sparkle no they don't that sounds cheesy as heck but a lot of them will catch the sun because there is that much foiling on them so there's that as well and finally if you want to see more of me and see more pretty books and see me continue to collect pretty books please consider subscribing down below and ringing that notification bell so you get notified every single time i upload new content i currently upload on a wednesday and on a sunday so be sure to stick around for more bookish content from me but otherwise that's everything for today's video i hope you're having an amazing day i hope you like this video my Twitter requested it, so I hope you do like it, and I will see you soon in the next video. Bye!